Let's talk about all of those weapons that we've sent to Ukraine. And for that, let's do a thought experiment. I want to do a little thought experiment. Why would Congress suddenly rush to approve $40 billion in heavy weapons in Ukraine? Good question, right? Weapons that we haven't actually seen on the battlefield yet. Why would Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell both make sudden trips to meet Vladimir Zelensky? Why would Zelensky be asking for newer, heavier weapons from American weapons contractors? I ask you to sit with that for a moment. Let just like wash over you like a like a steam bath. Now, if you watch Western media like CNN, MSNBC, no doubt you've seen headlines and so forth telling you that Vladimir Putin is on the run, how the Russian army is being crushed by an unexpected and powerful Ukrainian army, that they're impressed by it. Of course, they're being fed that information from NATO. Here's Atlantic Magazine with why Ukraine is winning. This is their headline. Why Ukraine is winning. Ukraine's success illuminates a strategy that has allowed a smaller state to so far outlast a larger and much more powerful uh, enemy, right? And when you go through it, it has a whole strategy that they break down. Then they talk about the ingenious strategy over at the Sunday Morning Herald. This is another ingenious strategy that they lay, they lay out. Ingenious strategy that could win the war for Ukraine. This is just a few days ago, May 17th. They're talking about the ingenious strategy that could win the war for Ukraine. So here's CNN now with a big wet kiss from General David Petraeus. Now, you remember David Petraeus, right? He, of mm -hmm. course, was the, uh, you know, the big to do in, in, uh, in Iraq, in, in Iraq, of course. Um, David Petraeus, uh, he was on CNN with a big wet kiss about how Ukraine is crushing the Russian army and how they're all so impressed over there at CNN. It was like, it's just amazing to watch these guys watch. Three Iraq invasion. G General, it's, it's good to have you on this morning as i've been watching this and i'm sure you as well watch watching this unfold we are all impressed uh, by ukrainian resolve and and some successes early on in the first week of this war but and i think we'll put the map up here russian forces are advancing particularly in the south more slowly in the east and the north but they are getting into position to surround key cities w without sounding pessimistic really just wanting to be realistic, oh, is really? Ukraine losing this war right now? Well, they're losing some ground, Jim, but I don't think they're losing the war. In fact, I don't think that this is a war ultimately that Russia and Vladimir Putin can win. Oh, really? really? But isn't losing any part of your country losing? Originally, the, when the war started, it was we're getting you, we're, we're going to expel you completely and retain the integrity of our country. And that is no longer... So is it losing any piece of your country losing? I would think so, but not according to CNN. I mean, this is, they're telling you, right? They've got the map. They've got the digital map. They've got David Petraeus. They've got former CIA director, U.S. Army, you know, U.S. Army General David Petraeus retired to tell you that he doesn't see how in the world Russia wins this thing. Russia wins this thing. I, I don't understand it. Okay, so here, so to hear the Western media explain it, Russia is on the run and Ukraine is winning. Now let's get back to our original question. Why would Congress rush to approve $40 billion in heavy weapons to Ukraine if they're doing so great? Remember how great those Javelin missiles were? The success we, we heard about against Russia? Here's more corporate media, CNBC, in the United States explaining how good these Javelin missiles are and how well they're doing against the enemy. One of the most effective and expensive weapon systems supplied is the FGM-148 Javelin. The Javelin is co-manufactured between Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, and it is a portable anti-armor system. This means the Javelin is designed to take out hard targets like modern tanks and armor personnel carriers or APCs. At a cost of close to 176000 per system, the Javelin is not a cheap weapon of war. Oh, it's not cheap. $150,000 for those things? Okay, sounds great, right? Or maybe not. So could it be that, in fact, the Western media has been lying to you? Is that possible? Well, we actually learned over the weekend that the billions of dollars in lighter weapons that we've sent to Ukraine have had major functional problems. Yes, all of that stuff that American taxpayers have paid for hasn't really worked at all. In fact, we learned from military sources in Ukraine that most of these weapons came from mothballed warehouses in the United States. Many of those surface-to-air missile systems and shoulder-fired missiles haven't been used since the 1980s and the 1990s. 
Jeez. Think about that for a second. Like, like there was not even, you know, you couldn't, how do you charge those? How do you, what power source do they use? Does well, it? They don't. Most of the battery systems, most of the batteries in these systems won't even power on for longer than a few minutes. So just think about this for a second. These things have been sitting in warehouses since when you were listening to like Nirvana albums, like, mm -hmm. or, or like you were watching Mannequin 2. Not yes. even man, not even mannequin one, like mannequin two, Great like that, film. like been sitting in warehouses since then, collecting dust, not being powered on. So these javelin missile systems have actually been a total disaster. Take it. I mean, just take one. This is how one newspaper explained it about it in the 1980s. Take a look at this. This is, uh, for example, hundreds of stingers supplied by the U.S. were seen as key to helping Mujahideen rebels drive Soviet forces out of Afghanistan in a conflict that spanned the 1980s and 1990s, right? So those Stinger missiles were used in the 1980s in Afghanistan against Soviet forces. But it's basically this is like, exactly these why in the, in the conversation around the weaponry that we're shipping, there is also a follow-up saying, and we will also replace our own stores, right? So it's good for us. It's like, you know, when Clayton has a neighbor who wants his old lawnmower and he's like, good, because I wanted the electric one anyway, right? So right. he's always happy to send out the old one and if he can upgrade. So, you know, you can see how there's really no such thing as altruism. So these things, I mean, look how cumbersome these things are, right? These things, and then they get destroyed almost instantly. So in a few weeks, whatever is left over, it's like, here, take our junk, our old yard sale stuff, because we don't need it anymore. So basically, all of the small anti-tank weapons and just about everything that we've sent to Ukraine has been rendered either obsolete or the Russians knew we were sending it to them through Poland and then they destroyed it, which is what happened with all those switchblade drones. Do you guys remember this? We were talking here on the show how they're like getting all excited about the switchblade drones that yes. were going to be sent. These things are going to be fired up in the air. They're going to be able to take out tanks from the air. Well, Russia knew exactly where they were. So when they got delivered, they just got destroyed in the warehouse. They knew exactly where they were. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. Just shortly before we went on the air, we got confirmation from Russia that they, in fact, at the Russian media announced that they just attacked a major uh, weapons depot inside of Ukraine all Western weapons that we sent. So your tax dollars hard at work. As soon as it's arriving there, it's being destroyed. And to what effect, by the way? Like, how long does this go on? So let's get back to our... our oh, it has an effect on the environment. <laughs> but we don't care about that. Yes. The what? <laughs> the what? What are you talking about, Greta Thornburg over here? I mean, here? you can't just blow things up and think that there's no blah, carbon footprint. Blah, blah, blah. Russia or the Blab. United States, like they're already, it's, it blows my mind how we really have a conversation about the carbon footprint of an avocado, <laughs> but we will not talk about what it takes to ship overseas across continent. No, you can't These, talk about he, This that. heavy weaponry. Okay. And it's all destroyed in waters and in, in, in streams and rivers. And so you have like all of these. Absolutely. It leaks in chemicals the, into yeah. the soil. So, I mean, on the one hand, we can be, we should be happy that there was no spring planting in Ukraine for wheat because we would be digesting runoff. Exactly. And you like radiated bullets or whatever the hell else they're Absolutely, using. Absolutely. Yes. So let's get back to our original question then. This is a good thought experiment because I want all of you who are watching right now. This is not a show like the reason we do this show is that we want to provide nuance here. Right. We told you about how Russians were being shot down. Their aircraft shot down and attacked successfully. We're telling you how this these light aircraft and these light weapons are absolutely a disaster and a waste of money. So why would Congress then rush to approve $40 billion in heavy weapons to Ukraine if they're doing so well over there? If everything is going according to plan, if you watch Western media, everything is great. Well, the answer is they're not. And I think this is a real moment now for the United States. We are now escalating this war to the point of no return. We are admitting that all of these small arms don't work. They're obsolete. And we're clearly seeing it in action. And a couple of big things stand out to me here because over the past few days, right, we had American taxpayers have been sold a bill of goods about this whole thing. 
that they've been sold and told that these billions you've spent have given us the strongest military in the world with the greatest weapons, right? You we have, have to, to send you this have savior to pay, package. You have to pay more for gas at home because you're supporting the greatest military in the world. You have to pay more for rent at home. You have to pay more for everything in the United States because you have the greatest military in the world. And now what we've seen over the past 90 days or 60, 70 days or whatever is that all of the stuff are javelin missiles that we're now ordering more of don't work, aren't working, and are literally being like they're obsolete at the moment they get there. The uh, switchblade drones destroyed the moment they're, they're, they're getting there. Stinger missiles basically obsolete because now Russia has figured out with heat decoys and how to fly low that these things are basically worthless. All the howitzers you're sending over there, worthless. So now we are starting to send the $40 billion package, which includes now we're going to be sending over these M270s, uh, these MSLR programs. We showed you these videos the other day. This is the new stuff that Zelensky wants. He's been asking the United States government, we need the heavier stuff. We need stuff that can shoot 100 kilometers into Russia. This is the stuff they want now. So now we're starting to send all of this stuff. Biden at first uh, was like, oh, we're not going to do this. And then he relented. And they want more, bigger, heavier they want like now the top of the line because now this is going to, you know, now we're talking about escalating into full World War Three. This is I mean, this is make no mistake about it, guys. This is World War Three. We're literally sending our the biggest things we have now to the front lines. Well, and again, before this package was even announced, Raytheon had said, we don't think we can even fulfill orders within the first or the second quarter of this year. And so thus you see these sort of front of the line supply chain that we're like, just make it happen, right? right? So when we want something, you know, we can make that that kind of stuff happen. Small business aid, COVID aid, eh, we can drag our feet about that. Yeah, and I, I just want to ask, like, as we wrap this up, like, why no members of Congress are standing up for this, like, and saying, uh, this is ridiculous, like, enough is enough, no way, no way. And then you have people like Ted Cruz, like, justifying that this is making you and America safer. But this is the truth about what's happening. These weapons that we've sent have been a total disaster. Ukraine is being wiped out, okay? They're pulling out these howitzers as their last sort of resort right now, and they're being destroyed. And so you have to ask yourselves as people of the free world, like, what do you want? Do you want an endless, protracted proxy war that NATO-funded, United States-backed proxy war that will end, will go on and on and on for years and years and years. This is what it's come to now when we send these billions of dollars. This is only going to run through September, by the way. They said this will last us through September, this $40 billion. Yes. And I think it bothers me a lot that they won't sort of give us the... Um, like just give us the straight talk to say we are at war and at least vote for it. Like put us in a formal war because then at least we know you know, what we're dealing with, but sort of fighting with money is the same, right? And so you think of the soldiers that, th that number that you just put on the screen, 18,000 soldiers that will be harmed in this conflict zone, they will not have the benefits package of being in an active conflict zone. That matters when right. you retire right. from the military. So we're not paying them the proper respect by sending people in there who will not get compensated for the risk that they're taking. And I just feel like it's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's disrespectful to not give it to us straight and say, we're not really in war, but, well, we're, they're liars. but we're spending billions. I mean, you're being nice. I think, they're, I think they're absolute corrupt liars. I mean, the whole machine is doing so well. All of these weapons contractors and politicians in Washington and uh, people are just being crushed right now. And they make, they're doing fine. You know, the military industrial complex and the larger uh, NATO-backed uh, powers right now are doing absolutely fine. And they're, this is all coming together according to plan. And then, of course, you had Biden yesterday in, in Japan saying, yeah, we would defend uh, Taiwan against a military incursion. We support a one-China policy, which means we don't actually technically uh, even agree that Taiwan is separate. But wait a minute, if China then comes in and takes Taiwan back, we will step in with military force, but we su support a one China policy. How does that freaking make any sense? It doesn't. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't support Taiwan when it comes to the World Health Organization. No. Taiwan was excluded and we're fine with that. Right. Um, OK. I love the big bowl of hypocrisy. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned. We've been blocked. We've been censored. 
That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.